everyone. I'm going to tell you an underdog story tonight. Imagine you've got a problem. You're a manager in a company that's been working for the last year trying to design a new product, and suddenly your chief competitor has leapfrogged into the market ahead of you with a product that's very similar. You've got to scramble to pull together a rapid response team with people from throughout the organization who are going to be able to work together and rapidly innovate some new design features that will differentiate your product from your competitors. You find yourself with one last spot on this team, and you've identified two employees who have similar critical skill sets but very different personalities. So you decide you're going to interview these two and get a sense of which one you want to pick for your team. So first comes in Don. He strides into your office. He's full of energy and enthusiasm. He shakes your hand and grins at you and goes on to tell you how excited he is to beat the pants off your competitor. A little bit later, Sheila walks into your office. She seems nervous as she sits down without shaking your hand and she starts peppering you with questions. And you get a sense that Sheila's pretty pessimistic that your team's going to be able to pull this off. So the question is, which one are you going to pick? Chances are, you're going to go for the extroverted Don over the neurotic Sheila. And that's because we expect our extroverted employees to be natural leaders and our neurotic employees to be disruptors. Did you pick the right one? This is the question that motivated research I did with Neha Shah in 2013. What we did is we went to teams and we asked what members thought of each other based on the personality characteristics of extroversion and neuroticism. And what we found is that early on when the teams had first formed, like you and me, people thought pretty positively of their extroverted teammates. They had high expectations, and as a result, they awarded their extroverted teammates with high social status, respect, esteem, prestige, things that are really symbolically very valuable on teams. And as we expect, they had really low expectations of their neurotic colleagues, and the more neurotic someone was, the lower their status was in their teams. But here's where things get really interesting. We went back to these teams later, after they'd had experience working together. And when we asked them, what do you think of your teammates now? A very different picture emerged. Instead of the positive evaluations of those extroverts, extroverted teammates had lost status because they'd failed to live up to their teammates' expectations. And in contrast, the neurotics came out smelling like roses. They had far exceeded their teammates' expectations, and as a result, they were rewarded with higher status from their teammates. So what was going on? This was really counterintuitive. Well, it turns out that the core of an extroverted personality is a desire to be the center of attention. And that doesn't go over very well in teams. In teams, what that means is extroverts don't listen very well, they're not good collaborators, and they may even take credit for other people's work. Those behaviors are not appreciated, and teammates punish extroverts by taking status away from them over time. The core of a neurotic personality is a desire and anxiety about avoiding social uh, disapproval. And they really, really rise to the occasion in teams because they don't want to disappoint their peers. And so your neurotic teammates work really hard. They're well-prepared, they're really engaged, and they put a lot of effort towards the team tasks. And these behaviors are not expected, and so teammates are pleasantly surprised and therefore reward their neurotic peers with higher status over time. So neurotics rejoice to the extent that you can. What this means is that if you do what comes naturally to you in teams, you, you may start off low, but you're going to end up okay in the end. You can go ahead and ride that low expectation train right into the station. <laughs> For extroverts, it's a more cautionary tale. Knowing that you run the risk of disappointing your peers, you need to work extra hard to demonstrate your team orientation. You've got to pay a lot of attention to your peers and work really hard in visible ways that contribute value to your team. Otherwise, you run the risk of losing status. And the message to managers is really clear here. You need to fit the personality of your, teammates, uh, of your employees to the tasks you're assigning them to.
And our research shows that neurotics excel in interdependent tasks, whereas extroverts probably do better in independent tasks and in individual contributor roles. Knowing this, which one would you pick for your team now? I bet you go for the underdog. Thank you. <laughs>